Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to FTL at long, long last. So, we're getting ready for another new adventure today, and let's get started. We have a couple new mods in action here, one of them being Dry Eagle's Gruesome mod, which changes any crew deaths in events to being related to being eaten by Gru's. Kind of a silly little mod, but we're going to put it on here and see what happens. We may not even encounter it very much in the game because of the fact that it only happens if crew die in events. Um, but we'll see. We'll leave it on probably for a little while, a couple games, and see what actually happens with it. But the main mod that we're using today is... Da -da -da, the Scarab mod, also by Dry Eagle. Another Dry Eagle episode here. So let's rename this puppy. Leave the Scarab name. We'll make it the VSS Scarab instead. There we go. And let's rename our crew to fit that theme. So, since we have the Scarab, we'll have some Egyptian gods going up on here. We'll have Ra, let's have Anubis, and Osiris, our NG, are going to be our gods of the underworld. Yes, indeed. There we go. And our crystal being the sun god. Makes sense to me. Ra, Anubis, and Osiris. Now, this ship has a whole heap of very special things about it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about them, and then we'll get flying. First thing got a whole bunch of custom parts. You'll notice it has a railgun, which is a shield-piercing, single-damage, breaching shot, which has really fast recharge. Very powerful weapon, but it does take three power to run. We also have sentinel drones, which are basically just defense drones, as far as I can tell. They shoot down missiles, they shoot down asteroids, they have the same power resource, and they both take one drone part. Same thing, just to rename, as far as I can tell. Anti-personnel drones are basically normal, although I think they only they only take three power? I don't know, I think these ones take the same amount of power as normal, too. Our custom augmentations, we have Caffeine Boost, which is basically uh, a movement speed boost, which is related to a little problem the ship has, and Scavenger Drones, so this is basically Mantis Pheromones. I might change the number of speed boost, I'm not really sure. Scavenger Drones are basically a repair arm that doesn't cost you any scrap. So, while not in combat, the ship sends out Scavenger Drones, which utilize unwanted debris to repair the hull at no cost, so that's always good. And there's another couple little interesting things. You've already noticed by now, these rooms aren't connected in any way, shape, or form. Characters will walk out of the room and then reappear in the next room. It's not instant, though. There is some delay. And it also gives some real pathfinding troubles if you try and send people, say, from here to here. They tend to, like, wobble around a little bit and then eventually work their way over there. But it does work. It does work, and it makes for a very interesting-looking ship. Now, there's one other little problem with this thing. Every room has something in it. There is nowhere that's safe to be hit. And since you have every room having something in it, you can't get any new systems. Because of the fact that you have one of everything you could fit, there's no way to get, for example, a cloaking device? I think the cloaking device is the one you can't have. Yes, you have a drone control and teleporter already, but there is no cloak. And there's one more interesting thing about this ship to talk about before we get started. We're almost done, don't worry. Having this ship in the game breaks every cloaking device. No power bars, turned it completely off, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to fix it or upgrade it. So, do not use this ship as a regular part of your rotation, but it's definitely worth throwing in there to play with a little bit. It also breaks ship enemy enemy cloaks. I'm not sure if it breaks the boss ship, because the boss ship is a little bit on the uh, cheaty side, so we'll see how that works. And AI ships can repair their cloak, but as far as I can tell, no one else can. So, we're going to get out here and we'll test this thing out. Very weird ship, hopefully a very fun one. We are still playing on normal. It is only a Type A, there is no Type B for it. And let's get a going. Alright, here we are. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies for the journey, so we'll need to make sure we explore each sector before we move on to the next, and we'll need to get to those exits before those rebels can catch us. Aww, yeah. Alright, so, this is what I mean, though. If we take our people and move them around the ship, we might see some of the glitchy movement. Oh, well, they actually did a pretty good job there. What if we send them down to the shield room? Will that get it? Yeah, there you go. See, they're... Uh, 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 uh. They eventually get where they're going, but they have a bit of a hard time with it. However, if you only send them one room at a time, they're generally pretty good at it. And if there's only one person moving, then they give them a, bit of, a little bit of a higher chance of being able to get around without crashing into walls. But sometimes they still have a little bit of a hard time, because they appear in the room without going through the door, and they have to walk back to actually get through it. But all told, that's not too bad. We also have a custom, like, lacy shield design. We can't see it too well against the yellow background here, but I'm sure we'll see it in a minute. So let's power up our railgun. Nice quick firing weapon, and let's get a jump in here, see if we can't cover some initial ground. Uh-huh, yes indeed. What do we have over here? We see a small station fitted with hundreds of repair drones, and they send us a message saying that they don't know who we are, and they don't care, but this is the right place to get some ship repair. However, we don't have any damage, so we're going to ignore that station. Thanks anyway, the gentlemen. Let's head over to this distress beacon and see if we can find anything good there instead. What do we have here? 
It appears that a chest beacon is coming from the surface of a nearby moon, where our sensors are picking up a single life form. Let's go down to the surface to investigate. Da da! We find a man living alone in the cave. From the appearance of his wrecked ship, it seems he's been here many years. He looks healthy, but his mental state is questionable. But we're going to be taking the risk anyway. We're going to bring him back to our ships in hope of finding some help for him. Yes, indeed. He seems to approve immensely upon getting back to the ship. It might take him a while for him to truly be well again, but until then, he seems happy to serve as a member of our crew. Hey, Charlie, you're not another NG. We have way too many NG on board this ship. But now we have four crew, which is awesome, because we can man every station. Ta-da! Let's get moving, then. We want to cover more ground here, otherwise there's no way we're going to find any nice resources. What do we have over here? Another station. I don't need ship refueling right now. Urgh. We're going to buy their cheap fuel anyway, though. Three fuel for six scrap is nothing to be scoffed at. Uh, thank you for your business. Now, let me fight something. I need money. We're not going to make any progress here if we can't fight anything. What is this all about? Oh, my goodness. <sighs> we arrive to find a number of ships convening around a station. We tune into their unencrypted communication channel, and they overhear half of their conversation. It seems they need to take possession of an enemy ship intact. We're to use our teleporter to offer to board their ship. Yes, indeed. They scan our ship and say, It appears you could help. A bandit is made off with some very important cargo, though I doubt they have any understanding of what it is they stole. We need you to capture the ship intact. We agree to capture it. Yes, indeed. Great! We'll relay their coordinates. Remember, do not destroy that ship! Remember, we'll be right behind you. I had a quest marker to our map. Okie doke. Where are we going? Two jumps ahead. That's okay. We're gonna try and board them, although it might be very difficult given we don't really have any boarding crew here, but that's okay. Scans reveal a large asteroid field nearby. Short-range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait for the FDL to recharge, so we're gonna take the chance and explore the asteroid field. However, a brief exploration yields nothing of interest after all. Oh well. You never know until you take a look. This has been really bad for actually fighting people so far. Really bad. We find the ship that we were asked to capture intact. We're not sure why, but they stress that it's of great importance that we kill the crew without destroying the ship. Alright then, I can do that. We are going to teleport our crystal captain right in there. So get him on the station, and Charlie, you're going to head over to the helm. And, uh, the railgun is just about charged up, so we take one shot at their weapons before we teleport him in. We want to try and knock out that Lido missile, if at all possible, or that laser gun. Either of them are good, but we missed our shot, which is terrible, so we're going to have to teleport out of here. Turn off the oxygen temporarily, teleport our crew into the shield room, and lock down that room. Thank you very much. He is no longer standing on the right system, so the odds of him actually being able to protect himself are fairly low. Here come a whole pile of lasers, which are bound to hurt us. They shouldn't be able to dodge anymore, so we should hit them for guaranteed. Yes, guaranteed damage is the best kind of damage. We're going to send Osiris to go fix the engines. That dodge chance is vital here. And we got hit in the drone bay, but that's okay because we weren't doing anything in there anyway. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have... Uh, ooh, you're taking some damage there, eh, Jack? Get in there and help smack that NG about a little bit. We're going to railgun them in the shields next. That should distract them again. There we go. Distracted the NG. We can jump back in here and fight him. They're probably going to hit us with this rocket, but there's nothing we can do about that. Yes, they did brighten the engines on top of our NG, but that's okay. This guy is going to die in a second. There we go. And we should be able to lock him out. No, we cannot lock him out, but we are going to try and teleport our crew to safety. There we go. Uh -huh. So now we're going to have to shoot them in the shields again. Hit that guy. There we go. And we took another hit. Jeez. We are getting beat up quite badly here. Repair those damages, Osiris. All they have left is their Leto missiles, so we should really do damage to those first. So they can stop shooting us. We missed them again. Awesome, they're going to hit us in the helm this time. We have really bad luck here. Alright, get that med bay active so we can kill that Mantis. We're going to shoot him with a railgun directly. If we can just kill him off, this will be a lot easier for us. Here comes another missile into the face. Turn on the oxygen again so we don't keep suffocating. Another hit in the shields. We're getting beat up so bad here. Wow. And let's kill off that Mantis. Okay, he's dead. Problem solved. We secure the ship and wait for the merchants to arrive. Upon arrival, they message us saying, Good job. Uh, we prefer if you didn't speak to this to anyone. They give us 21 scrap and a hull beam. And they shoot another missile at us, you jerks. are going to hit us, aren't they? Yes, they are. Screw you. Okay. Let's get our systems up and running again. Thank you, please. We really need to buy some more power so we can have these things running all the time, because if we had better dawns, it wouldn't have done half as much damage, because we got really beaten up there for no reason. No reason at all. Everyone took a whole heap of damage, too, which is not ideal. So, Anubis, you're going to the med bay as well. Send everyone over to the med bay, please. Although they will dance around a little bit here through the different rooms. Anubis, you are our... Oh, what are you? Hmm. You don't... None of you have any skill in anything. <laughs> this makes it hard to tell what I'm supposed to be using you for. Um, I don't remember. Anubis, you're going to shields. Osiris, you're going to weapons. And Charlie, you're going over here. Actually, Osiris never got a heal, so you send me back. 
Did we really get nothing? No skill in anything? Weapons. Oh, Osiris is supposed to be weapons. Okay, good. That probably was what it was. Charlie is definitely engines. Okay, there we go. So let's buy ourselves an extra power bar so we're not choking here for a lack of power. And power up the railgun once again. We have a hull beam when we can get that running, and that'll do some nice extra damage for us. But we're going to have to get moving a little bit faster, because as so far, we're not doing too well. We stumble across a forward scout of the rebel fleet. Alright, they're powering up their FTL, and if they get away, they will know they'll warn the fleet of our position. We can't have that now, can we? So we're going to railgun these suckers. We're going to railgun them first in the weapons to turn off their ability to do any damage, and then we're going to hit them secondly in the helm so they can't avoid us anymore. That sounds like a good plan to me. Hit them hard and hit them fast. We missed them. Fantastic. All right, get those shields back up. No, you got to hit in the oxygen. Fantastic. Head in there, please. Charlie, and fix that up. We've smashed their FTL system. They're not going to be using that anytime soon. Shields back online just in time. That was lucky. We should be more or less safe from them now. We are going to railgun their weapons one more time anyway to make sure that we're safe. Next shot is going back into the helm to make sure they can't fix it. The hull breaches make this weapon really effective for keeping systems offline because it takes time for them to fix the breach and then they have to start fixing the system Then you can breach it again, they stop fixing it to fix the breach and it just makes their life difficult. Next shot going back into the... hmm, hang on. We can try and suffocate these guys out by smashing their oxygen system too. Puts a hole in the room as well which makes it really good for draining the oxygen out really fast which is fantastic, and then we might be able to suffocate them out and leave them dead in the water, especially because this guy, oh, we managed to fix it just before he suffocated, we're going to have to smash that to make up for it. I'm sorry there, gents, no fixing for you. And we will railgun them in the oxygen again if this guy manages to fix that hole in the floor, but I'd be surprised if he does. He just managed it. Very lucky there, gentlemen. Unfortunately for you, you're not going to suffocate, so being very lucky is a very relative thing. And the last crew member gets railgunned in the face. All right. The ship goes silent, a relief to know that we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting a missile, a drone part, and 16 scrap out of it. We're going to use that scrap to buy another power bar, aren't we? Mm, maybe not. We might want to be able to power our drone if we can, but for the time being, it might be better to hold on to our money trying to get level 2 shields, maybe. Let's jump up here into this nebula and see what's going on over there. Looks like we're going to run out of space here very quickly, which is not good. A pirate ship arrives shortly after us. Judging from the fact that they're trying to avoid our ship, we assume that they're a smuggler trying to stay away from the beacons, but we're going to attack them anyway. Get that pirate ship. We power up weapons and move in to engage. They have some pretty hefty lasers. Probably only have two crew, though, so it's not too much of a worry. One guy is in the shields, one is in the helm from the looks of things, so we're going to hit them in the weapons to try and take out some of their attack potential before they do too much damage to us. There we go, and I can only hit one shot. There you go. One shot hits, of course, because they have perfect aim. We have terrible dodge is the big important thing, but that's okay too. Hit them back again in the weapons. Make sure they're not fixing that sucker. Alright, we can't see a darn thing what's going on in there, so we don't know what we're coming up against. I could try and board them just for fun, but I don't know what's going on in there. It looks like they have an NG of some kind, and they are trying to escape now, which makes trying to get on board their ship even more dangerous. But that just makes it fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to send two of our crew over there for no good reason and board the enemy ship. Alright guys, are you feeling crazy today? Because I sure am. Let's jump into their... Shield room. Hello. There's an NG and a Zoltan. Excellent, they're going to die a horrible, horrible death. Even a NG is better than killing a Zoltan. So they should, especially because he's already damaged. So we shouldn't have too much trouble murdering these poor unfortunate souls and stealing all of their lovely cargo. Down goes the NG and down goes the Zoltan. The ship refuses to fight, but we still detect life signatures. Apparently this was a prisoner transport, and the single survivor offers to join our crew in exchange for their freedom. We also get 19 scrap, and Borman! Yes! Fantastic! Our boarding crew is now much more effective. Alright, Borman. Welcome aboard. You are probably not going to be ever on the helm, though, after this. So, you're going to head yourself directly over to our teleporter bay. Welcome aboard, chum. We're going to send Ra over to the helm once again, and Charlie back to engines. You're having a hard time getting through those doors, aren't you? Yes, you are. All right. Well, we made it. We made it, so that's all well and good. <sighs> Lovely. We have 40 scrap, not quite enough to buy the thing we want, so we're going to jump over here first, and we'll work our way towards that exit. Hopefully there's some goodies in there. What do we have here? A pirate ship arrives shortly after us once again. Judging from the fact that they're still trying to avoid our ship, we assume that they're also a smuggler, also trying to stay away from the beacons. But we have no pity for them. We're attacking those pirates. Yes, indeed. We power up weapons and move into engage. Da 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 da. Hit them in the weapons. We're gonna try and smash these guys nice and hard. They probably have rock crew on board. We'll have to wait and see. But for the time being, we're just gonna smash them in the weapons and hopefully reduce their attack potential. There's somebody in there trying to fix the system, so we're gonna shoot them in the face with a railgun as well to make sure they can't fix the system. There we go. Take that there, gentlemen. 
and someone else is now coming in to try and fix it, which means we are going to teleport our crew into their shield room to distract them, hopefully, and if they don't feel like being distracted, that's great, because it means we can just destroy their shields. Not that it really does any... Oh, no, I teleported too soon. Whoops. That's stupid of me. Well, there's one Mantis coming to fight us. We should be able to beat him in a straight-up fight. Should be able to beat him. And here's someone else coming to help, so we're going to shoot them in the oxygen. We missed. Fantastic. Oh, he's gotten back to fix the oxygen. Perfect. That worked out much better than I was expecting. All right, our Mantis has taken the beating, but he did manage to destroy their crew. We're going to run him down to the engine room for now. Hopefully they won't follow me too fast. We're going to railgun them in the shields, which should distract them completely from trying to fight me. It is another Mantis. That's not good. Leave me alone, chum. No, he does not want to leave me alone. We're going to teleport out of there then, hopefully fast enough to get away without dying. Ooh, that was close. You have four health left, Borman, you lucky, lucky man. There's one very injured Mantis left on board this ship, and it looks like he's trying to fix their shield, so we're going to railgun him to an early grave. Pow! Looks like they don't want to fight and are trying to escape. Who's left? Oh. How did he get out there? Okay, apparently there's someone in there. In their... In their helm. But we're gonna have to smash the helm then with another railgun shot because we don't have the resources to get over there directly. And with the crew dead, we search the ship. Finding military-grade weaponry, taking what looks the most useful. Getting 17 scrap and a pike beam. Alright. Lots of beam weapons going on over here. Well, let's start up our healing factor again, get people back where they should be. We'll send Ra back to the helm, and Charlie back down to engines. We might just leave Ra over here permanently, hang out with Borman in the teleporter, but for now I like being able to power all four rooms if it turns out it's something we can't actually board. So, why not? Borman, there we go, back to the teleporter room, looking good, and power up those engines once again. We have 57 scrap, which is just enough to buy level 2 shields. We won't be able to power them right away because we don't have any spare power, but we're going to buy it anyway, just because. So if we jump here, we should have just enough time to get to the exit. It isn't a nebula beacon, though, so honestly, nothing's going to happen when we get there. So we might as well look over here first. Stupid exit nebulas never having anything. Once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. Nearby pirates advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. Our crew manages to keep them barely operational, and we move in for the attack. All right, then. That's how you're going to play it, and that's how we're going to play it. We're going to railgun you in the weapons, because that will take you completely offline, as per usual. We can see what you've got now, so you're not half as scary. And we'll be boarding you early enough to murder your helpless, helpless crew. Railgun them in the weapons, please. Thank you. They now have a nice hull breach to deal with. The NG should be able to fix it fairly quickly, but not if we shoot them with another railgun. Give them what for. There we go. Now they take another beating. Their weapons are completely offline. We should be able to focus on boarding to actually kill them off. Get around there, Crystal and Mantis. We have to get in there and do some damage. So we're going to teleport into the shield system where they should send both of their crew. Interesting. We're going to lock one in and kill him by himself, just for fun. Get in here, lock him in. There we go. We should be able to focus him down before the crystals fall off the walls. We should make things nice and easy for us. Our game is a little bit loud, isn't it? There we go, that's better. Turn down the volume so it's a little bit more manageable. I wondered why it was so loud. There we go. Kill that guy off, and once the NG comes in, he will be easy prey. Oh, yes, he will. Bye-bye there, NG fool. You've got nothing against our Crystal Mantis boarding party. There we go. Down he goes. With the pirate disabled, our engines come back online. We salvage what we can from their ship, getting two fuel and 17 scrap. Awesome. Teleport back on board there, gentlemen. Well done. Get you in the med bay, get you all healed up, and in the meantime, we're going to buy ourselves another power bar. There we go. Now we have the option of running our level 2 shields if we like, but only if we have level 1 engines instead, and then we wouldn't be able to run our uh, teleporter either. So it's not exactly an ideal setup, but it is still better than nothing. Send you through here, jump around those doors a little bit, and get you back where you're going. There we go. Okay, so it looks like our options now are jump to the exit or die. So jumping to the exit it is, even though we know there's not going to be anything there. Let's go. When we reach the exit, what do we find? Guess what? It's going to be nothing. The long range beacon is almost hidden within the nebula, and when the FTL drive is charged, we'll be able to jump to the next sector. And yes, indeed, we find nothing here. Oh, that was expected. We could jump over here and then jump back. Hmm, might be a bit of a stupid idea, but we might be able to get some nice resources from it. We will have to fight an additional uh, rebel ship, but I think that's okay. At this point, we have a lot of health. We've got some pretty decent arsenal, and uh, we could use the extra money. We've been fairly unlucky as far as resources go so far. And a pirate ship was lying in wait inside this asteroid field. It immediately moves into attack. And it has a bomb weapon, which is going to be very bad for us. We need to get those shields offline pronto. Pronto. Because the sooner we can get them non-functional, the sooner we can kill them off horribly with the asteroids. We're probably going to try and do the minimal damage strategy here. and Just punch them in the shields. But it should effectively work. We should maybe turn on our sentinel drone instead. I'm not sure. Let's try it. We'll turn off the med bay. Turn on the sentinel drone. Shoot down some asteroids for us. They got a bomb in the weapons room, which is not good. We need to fix that right now, otherwise we're not going to be able to do a darn thing to them. 
Here come some lasers. Hopefully they miss us. No, they did not miss us at all. Not ideal. You fix those systems. Railgun needs to be online right now. There we go. Railgun them in the shields. Please get those systems non-functional pronto. Our radar just sort of smashed. So we have to get in there and fix that now. There's no external uh, doors in this ship as far as I can tell. So we do have to put out all the fires manually. Their shields are now broken, which is good. They missed us with the bomb. And they're going to start getting pummeled by the asteroids sooner rather than later. And we're doing a terrible job of blocking them. We're going to railgun on auto-fire their weapons so we can actually take them offline so they can't hurt us quite so much. They're trying to power up their FTL in an effort to escape, but we're not going to let that happen either, as they're going to get pummeled long before they can have any opportunity of getting out of here. Our drone is going to go offline in a second because of the fires, which is not ideal, but sometimes these things just have to happen. Alright, we have fixed our radar mostly, and their ship is destroyed. Fantastic. We're going to send a pair of NG in to go fix the fires in the drone bay. Ship explodes, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 12 scrap. That did not pay for the amount of damage we took, but our repair drone did a whole bunch of healing there for us. So hey, that worked out pretty well, actually. Put out those fires there, guys. Put out those fires. There we go. Whew! Okay. Go, go, go repair team. Someone back in the engines to fix up the damage, and we should be more or less okay. We'll probably have to heal up our crew after this, because they took quite a bit of a beating. There we go. System's more or less back online. Charlie in the med bay to get healed up first. We still don't have enough money to buy the extra shield bar I was hoping we'd be able to get, but we'll get one sooner rather than later, so it's okay. And Charlie, head your way back down to the engines, and Anubis over to shields. Cyrus back in there to heal up as well, and then we can send you back down to weapons. You should level up really quickly, Cyrus, because this 8 second charge shield piercing weapon is very easy to keep shooting. There we go, send him back down to his room as well. He does have a bit of a hard time getting over there, but that's okay. And power up. There we go. Alright, looking good. Shield level 2 online. Yes, indeed. Alright, that's what we're looking for. Let's jump back into the fray, and hopefully we'll have something good over here. We could actually probably jump over here, then jump back, and then jump over here. We should probably get enough jumps, but we're just going to go straight over to the exit, because it's not worth the extra struggle, I don't think. What do we have over here? We found the exit beacon, but the rebels got here first. We'll have to survive long enough to jump to the next sector. That should be okay, although that Hermes missile is really scary. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our Sentinel drone instead. Leave shield level 1, Sentinel drone online. Shoot that missile down, please. Shoot them in the weapons with our railgun. That should make things nice and easy for us. Here we go. Pa pow There we go. There's one of the lasers offline, making them a lot less dangerous, especially because our drone should have no problem shooting down the Hermes missiles. Shoot that thing down. There we go. Good. That's what we pay you for. Railgun them in the weapons again should knock out that system. These shield-piercing weapons are incredibly powerful. The fact that you can just knock out their weapons without them being able to do a darn thing about it makes them just ridiculously good. Hit them again, please. Knock out one of those basic lasers again. We, we can actually easily kill these guys like this. There's nothing they can do. Normally, this would be incredibly hard because those two shield bubbles would be impenetrable with our basic weaponry. But the fact is, we can just totally ignore them and smash them in the face directly. Let's railgun these guys in the oxygen for fun. Make their life a little bit more difficult. We'll railgun them in the helm so they can't go anywhere, they can't dodge. And, uh, yeah, generally make their lives unpleasant. Smash them in the helm, there we go. Let's smash them in the helm again, even. See how they like it. Actually, let's put a hole in a different room. Let's put a hole in their med bay. Because that doesn't look like a good place to let them be happy. Not if we're trying to murder their crew without them being able to do anything about it. We want to make sure they're as unpleasant as, rather, unhappy as possible. Railgun them, please. There we go. More trouble for these fools. Hit them in the shields next. Give them lots of things to worry about. Nowhere is going to be safe on board this ship once we're done with it. And we'll stick another hole in the engines. They're probably being able to fix some of these, but I'm not really sure which. They're all humans, so they don't have the NG super repair speed. Let's stick another hole in this empty room, and that should be the entire ship full of holes. And there they go! They all suffocated. There's no time to salvage enemy ship. We have to jump away before the cruisers get in firing range. We only get one fuel. We knew that was going to happen, but it was fun to wreck them anyway, since we had the opportunity. Let's get out of here with our free fuel. Rock-controlled sector or rock-controlled sector? That is sure some great options there, friends. We're going to go one or two. Mm, let's go to one. Nothing really makes any difference. One it is. All right, here we are. The rock people are a powerful and proud race. It's not unheard of to have a peaceful journey through their lands, but we shouldn't count on it. That's okay by me. I'll be right back, though, in one second. Okay, so let's see what we're going to be doing here. Probably leveling up those shields. We might be using our defense drone a lot because we're in a sector with a rock crew, so we're going to have a lot of missiles, most likely. We might try and get our beams up and running, get our engines up and running a little bit better. Basically, what we need to do is fight a lot of people, get a lot of money. That's what this game's all about. Killing people, getting money. 
We detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuers are pirates. So we agree to aid the civilians. Here we go. We power up weapons and engage the pirate ship. What do they got? They got a dual laser and a heavy laser. Not too dangerous. They do have some kind of drones, though, that I can't see. So maybe it can be a boarding drone, which would be evil. It is a boarding drone! What do you know? You jerks. They smashed into our drone control. I could turn our anti-personnel drone on and really give them a hard time. But that might be kind of silly as well. I don't know. Whatever, let's do it. Anti-personnel drone, you fight that boarding drone, please. Thank you. You're also going to be healing in there, so you'll have no time, no hard time killing them. We are going to take some shots here, though. We did turn off the heavy laser, but not the dual laser, which is the one that definitely hit us just now. Hit them again, please. Want to make sure that thing stays offline. There we go. And the drone is going to die sooner rather than later. What we're going to do next is we're going to hit them in their oxygen supplies. There we go. Make sure no one has the ability to breathe. I have a powerful oxygen system. Wow. Let's hit them again in there, see if we can't put a real hole in it, and we're going to have to hit them in the med bay after that, I think. We missed, fantastic. Anti-personnel drones have 100 health, don't they? Normally? I don't remember. Boarding drones, I think, have more. 120? I can't remember exactly how much health they have. We'll have to take a look once he heals up fully again. Now, we need to do some real damage here, because these guys are not too bothered by the things we've been doing so far. We could try and board them as well. I think they just fired another drone at us, didn't they? Yes, they did, and this one hit in the weapons, which is terrible. Okay, get in there, give some help. You're gonna die, most likely. We need to turn off that drone system, because I do not feel like having this happening anymore. There we go. Kill that guy while he can't fight back. And then we need to get in there and fix that system. So we're gonna send our Mantis in to give some assistance. And we are gonna railgun them in the weapons to make sure that thing stays offline. Thank you very much. Okie doke. We are suffocating quite badly in here now, which is not ideal. But now we've killed off the drone, we can send everyone home. So these guys are going to head over to the medbay quickly before they suffocate horribly, and we are going to send Charlie in to fix this hole. Alright, we are going to railgun them in the something. Let's railgun them in the drone control again. I don't really feel like having any more drones hitting us right now. And they've got the weapon back online, so we're going to have to smash that next too. Okay, we don't actually have our medbay powered right now. That's not ideal. <clears throat> no indeed. Okay. These guys are going to be destroyed rather than suffocated or murdered or whatever, because it's just easier this way. For the time being, we've got too many other problems. That stupid boarding drone caused way more damage than it was worth. We'll smash them with one more shot. There we go. We're going to turn off the shields now, so we can turn on the med bay. Kind of a risky maneuver, but they're not going to be able to shoot anything at us anyway, apart from that drone. Stinking drones. I hate boarding drones. They're so irritating. And they've hit us in the radar room. Fantastic. And they're dead. Well, that was irritating. More holes in our ship for no good reason. Our ship breaks apart, and we hasten to contact their civilians. We got one missile, one drone part, and 17 scrap. When we contact the civilian ship, we find out that they were a shipwright, and they'd like to help us out like we helped them. The captain offers to install a scrap, a 15 scrap, and ion blast Mark II on our ship. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Awesome. We basically have an army of beams, and we can swap the railgun out for the Ion Blast Mark II if we feel like it. And then we have an arsenal worthy of the gods. So let's get these systems back up and running now. Get in there. No, uh, no, no, not you. Mantis goes in. No, not you. Mantis goes in there because he can fight the drone faster. We'll send Charlie into the med bay as well. We'll send... Oh, you're actually fixed there. So Anubis, you're going to need to heal up as well now. Everyone needs the heals. You get in there. No, get in there. Oh my goodness. Okay. For some reason, they do not like me trying to click on them. I wasted all that repair time, but that's okay. Move people around so we can actually get in the med bay. Charlie, back to the engines, please. We'll send Osiris out of the room with no oxygen. Ugh, okay. Things are mostly looking up now. Borman, you're going to head into the teleporter, and we're going to get things moving once again. Anubis, back up to shields. There we go. And once you're healed up, Osiris, you can head back down to weapons. That was a pain in the butt. You gotta hate them boarding drones. We do have an anti-personnel drone chilling out on board now, though, so we're going to let him heal up as well. Looks like they must have 150 health. Because he has a lot of health still to go, and he's, only, he's already at 100. Regardless, turn the shields back on. We need to buy some more power bars, because we need to get our systems up running reliably, rather than the unreliable state we currently have. So we are going to go engine bar, power bar, and then we can turn off our drone. That should give us two more power to run our shields. <sighs> okay, okay. We'll let him heal up a little bit longer, because we might as well have him at full strength when we go to our next fight. Actually, let's just teleport. There's a store over there. What do we have to sell? We have a bunch of weapons. We could probably sell one of them. Ion Blast Mark II, these drones. We get a lot of stuff. A lot of just stuff. I don't know what we're going to do with it, though. I think for now, we'll stay away from the store, because we don't really have anything to sell them. Although, we could buy some fuel. That would probably be a good idea. We'll jump over here, and then we'll decide if we need to go to the store or forwards. So, what do we have over here? Anything interesting? I hope there is. This just speaking is coming from a civilian ship. It appears they're being chased by a pirate. Well, let's aid those civilians. That's what we do best. 
All right, we power up weapons and engage the pirates. And they look like they have a single weapon. Oh no, they have an ion blast and a heavy laser. But if we turn off our drone, turn on our shields, they won't be able to do a darn thing to us because our higher level shields can easily absorb those two shots. So we're going to railgun them down to nothing with that fantabulous auto-fire feature which you can get by holding control when you're picking your target. And we will puggle them into oblivion. And then we should be able to kill them off manually and get more loot from them. So we'll have to see how that goes. They have no med bay, which makes things extra easy. And I think we're going to start by actually hitting them five times, thank you. Please continue to actually shoot the targets. This is your job, Osiris. Please do it properly. Hit them more often. Excellent. Our drone's chilling out here. Must have 150 health, because he's got 124 and he's still not full. Fire them one more time. We should be able to take direct action. So we're going to send Charlie up to the helm and Ra over to the teleporter. We're going to take the fight into our own hands. And we are going to waste a little bit more time, though, by shooting them in the helm with the railgun to make sure they can't run away, because we do not want them trying to run off with our crew on board. And then we're going to teleport our guys into... Activate, teleport into the shields, and we'll need to actually use a different power bar for that. We'll leave one spare, because otherwise, the shields won't be able to recharge fully, and their weapons will actually do some damage. So we're going to railgun them in the helm one more time, and we're going to teleport into the shields. Hello, gentlemen. We're actually going to lock this friend in here, lock down power. That means that we can easily take him out with our Mantis crystal powers combined, or at least weaken him quite a bit, which should make things a lot easier for us. Now that there's two hull breaches in there, they're not going anywhere. So, we killed off that Rockman well and good, and the Crystal also gets to fight as well. Excellent. We should kill off these guys in no time. We'll shoot them in the weapons just for fun. There you go. Stop trying to attack us, please. And down goes the remaining Rockman. There are no more life signs detected on the pirate ship. We gather a missile, a drone part, and 30 scrap, and we contact the civilians. They respond. Oh my goodness, what is this? This is ridiculous! This, it's a good thing we came when we did, and they'd like to help us now. They give us a heavy laser Mark II and 13 scrap. They're just throwing amazing equipment at us. Just throwing it at us. This is ridiculous. All right, get people in the med bay. We'll buy another power bar, because why not? This is what we're doing here. Power up our engines. We have enough power to run all of our main systems short of the teleporter now at all times. And we have an arsenal worthy of Mordor. All right. Send Borman in there, Charlie down to the helm, and Ra back to the engines. Sheesh. Seriously, though, like... Okay, stop moving around there, guys. Okay. Look at this. This is insane. Heavy laser Mark II, burst ion blast Mark II, hull beams, pike beams, rail guns. This is ridiculously good. Ridiculously good. This is crazy. What do we take? What do we stop taking? If we were to equip the ion blast Mark II, the heavy laser Mark II, like the thing is, this is really good right now because it takes no power to run. It's going to stop being quite as good later on, although it still is pretty powerful because it penetrates all shields. But. If we could power up the Ion Blast with, say... Actually, we'll keep the Railgun's amazing. We'll have to keep that. The problem is we only have three weapon slots. We don't, if we had four, we could take the Ion Blast 2, the Heavy Laser 2, the Railgun, and one of these beam weapons and be absolutely devastatingly powerful. But as it stands, we only have to, we only get to pick three. Hmm. You want to take the Hull Beam or the Pike Beam? Probably the Pike Beam, because it has a longer range. I'm not actually sure how these work. I haven't used them very much. But you know what? We're going to experiment a little bit more. It's going to take us a little bit of time before we can afford to swap out our weapons anyway. So we're going to hold on to them for the time being and try and make some more money. We could go to the store and sell some stuff, but we want to kind of hold on to it because it looks really cool. So we're going to try and just make our way forwards and hopefully we'll find some fuel up ahead because otherwise we're going to find ourselves stranded. A rock ship flies past our windows and recognize outcast decorations on the hull. These are also pirates. Okay, pirates, we have one thing to mention to you, and that's railgun time. We're going to smash them in the weapons. First shot should take out the lethal missile, unless I'm very much mistaken. Power up those engines to full so we have a higher chance of dodging their attacks. Yep, first shot takes out the missile. That's the big one. And the other shot weapons can't really hurt us. So we're going to smash them again in the, he in, the, in the weapons. There we go to make sure they can't do a darn thing and to distract them a little bit. Then we're going to send in our boarding party to murder them horribly. That's the way we do it. And we'll send Charlie up to the helm to make sure we have some dodge potential at least. And teleport into that shield room. Get over here, gentlemen. And we're going to lock one of you in with Ra's lockdown power because that's how we do it. There we go. We should be able to kill these rock men. No trouble like we did previously. We're going to smash him in this room because he'll take the damage there. There we go. Wow, that did a lot of damage. He must have been suffocating in that room previously. And now he's suffocating in here trying to get into us. Or he will be soon. And down goes the rock man. Fantastic. And now they're going to fight our crystal guy, and they already have a ton of damage, so it's not going to go so well for them. Let's hit them in the helm just for fun. There we go. And kill them off. Nice try, Rockman. 
Oh my goodness, we find a weapon system on their ship. With no crew to stop us, we install it on our own, getting 20 scrap and a heavy ion. If we're not careful, we're gonna run out of storage space soon. That's ridiculously good. Okay, get these guys down to the med bay. Heal them back up. You guys have to stop giving us free stuff, because this is crazy lucky. I don't think I've ever gotten this much free stuff in one sector before. Raw, get yourself back over to the helm. Or at least by this point in the game, is what I meant to say. We are in the second sector, of course. <sighs> it's crazy. They really want to throw free stuff at us. And I'm not going to complain about that. No siree, Bob. Let's jump ahead, then. Where are we going to go? Let's go this way. Anything good over here? We found an asteroid field. That's not exactly good. We arrive at an asteroid field and immediately begin evasive action when a loud clunk reverberates through the ship. At first, we think the hull's been hit, but the noise came from some rock intruders teleporting aboard. All right, well, they're in our med bay, so Borman, go kill them. They'll be easy prey for you, and we're going to railgun these guys in the shields. The weapons, rather. We're going to take those weapons at pronto, because they will take out our shields. Otherwise, we're more or less safe from the asteroids in this area. There goes the dual laser, but the burst laser Mark II is still online. It has the potential to lose quite a bit of damage to us if we don't get it offline pronto. We did take a damage in the med bay already, and that weapon's now on fire, which means our... Mantis has to run away, which is not ideal. We're going to run him to the helm, and we'll run our crystal crew, Ra, over to go deal with that border. He had much more luck than I would have guessed. <sighs> of course, they would manage to get an asteroid right in the med bay at the exact wrong time. If I had been powering up the med bay the whole time, that would not have been a problem, but I didn't want to spend the energy when we need to keep our shields running. Also, that fire spread quite nastily. Their weapons are now completely smashed, which is good. They can't do anything to us. We can take our time here getting systems back up and running like they should be. Borman, you're going to go and help fix the med bay so you can actually heal yourself up, and we're going to railgun them in the oxygen, just for fun. Take that there, chum. And what are we going to hit them at next? How about we hit them in the oxygen again, make sure they don't get anything going on there, or turn off our dodge potential a little bit, turn on the healing since they can't hit us now anyway. There we go, two holes in the oxygen, that should drain incredibly fast, and we should be able to hit them pretty hard while they're in there trying to fix the holes. One more shot in there, there we go, and they try and surrender, saying that their systems are suffering. The rock ship attempts to make contact, offering us six fuel, four missiles, and ten scrap in exchange for freedom. Well, that's a pretty good offer, especially the, f the fuel. We need fuel quite badly. So I guess we should take this, because otherwise we're going to wind up running out of fuel ahead, but the ten scrap is a little bit pitiful. However, there are ten items in here total, probably making it very worth taking, so we're going to accept that offer on the merit of the fuel alone. You lucky rock men, you. You managed to offer me the one thing that would get you freedom. If you had offered me anything else, missiles or drone parts or whatever, I would have happily killed you. Okay. This ship is doing pretty well so far. Doing pretty well so far indeed. However, we are stuck in an asteroid field, so we can't buy anything. So we're going to jump over to this distress beacon and hope there's something more interesting over there. What do you know? We find the number of ships fleeing from a small space station. We ask them what's wrong. We say that they're being overrun by some sort of giant alien spiders. We can send our anti-personnel drone in to help. That's exactly what we're going to do. We pull up alongside the station and release the drone through the airlock. Within a short time, the majority of the creatures are dead, with only a little collateral damage. They express their most sincere gratitude, and we take three fuel drone part and eleven scrap home with us. Thank you kindly. Actually, Ra, you're gonna go heal up before I forget to heal you, because you are down to about 89 health. About 89 health, yeah, give or take none. Heal you up, and send you back to your helm good as new. We have 72 scrap, so what are we gonna spend that on? What are we gonna spend that on? Let's take a look here at our ship's menu. We could try and buy ourselves a little bit of higher engines. Being able to dodge stuff early on is always amazing. The other option is trying to work up our engines, our weapons rather, but the thing is we need at least 85 to level that up, and then we need the power bars to still run those things. So for the time being, I think it's more profitable for us to boost the engines, because that's something we can actually afford to immediately uh, capitalize on, whereas something else we will have to wait a little bit longer. And it doesn't do us any harm to have to wait a little bit longer before our weapons are more powerful. What do we find over here? No one bothers our ship as we float among numerous space stations and mining platforms. The rocks certainly run efficient operations. For once, they didn't decide to come fight us for no good reason. There's a store over there, but we're going to ignore it as much as possible because we want to try and make some profit here, not try and give things away. Although I do kind of want to sell that heavy ion because it's not doing us any good. A rock mining vessel is harvesting the mineral-rich asteroids in this locality, and their scouts take our presence to be a transgression. We have to move to battle stations. They won't be able to hurt us directly with their weaponry, but they will certainly be able to do us some damage if they get the shields down and asteroids hit us. So we're going to railgun them, excuse me, railgun them one shot in the weapons to make sure they can't do that, and then we're going to railgun them in the oxygen. And that should give them plenty to worry about. Also, they just took an asteroid in the helm, which is perfect timing. There we go. I don't know how it managed to get in there. I was pretty sure it didn't do anything to their shields in any way, shape, or form, so I don't know what just happened there. But it worked out in our favor, so that's okay. We just leveled up a whole pile of different things. Both of our dodge, our helm, and our piloting went up, and our shields went up, and our weapons went up. 
Oh no, our engines did not go up yet, but everything else did. Do we not hit them in the oxygen again to make sure they cannot fix that system? Thank you very much. I'd love to put a second hole in there to make it even harder for them to fix, but it does not look like that's going to be happening anytime soon, but that's okay by me. They're not going to be able to fix it either, because we can just put new holes in it as soon as they manage to fix the old ones. So, like so. Hit the hole in there. There we go. New hole in your oxygen. I hope you guys didn't like trying to do anything like that. We're going to board you directly with our Mantis, and he should be able... Ooh, this might be a really bad idea, actually, because of the fact there's no oxygen on board that ship. If we board them, and they manage to actually uh, drain the oxygen out before we can get out of there, we're going to start taking a lot of damage on our Mantis. But you know what? Just for stupidity's sake, we're going to teleport in there. Since this is a... Uh, what do you call them? A hazard beacon. We're not going to be able to immediately recharge a teleporter. It's going to have to recharge at its normal speed. But he does get two kills out of it, which is pretty darn good. With the crew dead, we take three fuel out of storage and also get 26 scrap, which is great. And now as long as we can get out of there before we suffocate, Borman should be very happy indeed. But yeah, since we're in the asteroid field, systems do not automatically recharge because it's dangerous here. So they figure if you have to risk being damaged for having things going on, why not leave them? And I agree with that philosophy. There we go, we got out of there just before the oxygen drained out. Nicely done, Borman. You're gonna go heal yourself up a little bit. Power to the med bay. Uh-huh. And we should be able to get out of here in no time. Well done, chum. Okay. Where are we going next? Let's jump over to this beacon. See if there's anything good over here, and see if we can't make some more progress towards powering ourselves up even more. A rock ship flies past our windows and we recognize outcast decorations on the hull. These must be pirates. Yes, indeed, they got Lido missiles and a basic laser. The basic laser is not a problem, but the Lido missile could be, so we're going to make sure we shoot them right in the weapons to take that thing offline. Gotta love them piercing damage. Don't have to worry about anything else. Just shoot them directly where you want damage done. Alright, Lido missile is offline, which is ideal. Next shot's going to hit them in the weapons. And we could try the same suffocation strategy we just tried against these guys, because it worked pretty well. See if we can put a second hull breach in there. Fantastic. That's going to drain the oxygen out of there incredibly fast. There we go. We're going to railgun them in the oxygen system now to make it even harder for them to breathe. Uh-huh. And to make sure things go a little bit badly for them. Next up, we're going to hit them again in the weapons room, so we can hit both of them with one shot, which is good. Doing extra damage to the enemy is always, always enjoyable. And he's already running for the hills, having no health left to fight with. Let's see if we can't stop them from doing anything. Oh, no, they're stopping themselves. We teleport our Mantis back in so we can kill some more people by himself. There you go. Kill them, Borman. Kill them by yourself. And he has easily murdered those poor unfortunate rocks. There we go. With the crew dead, we take another 3 fuel out of storage and 29 scrap. Well, our fuel problem has definitely been solved at this point. Teleport back on board there for Chum, and get yourself healed back up. There we go. What are we going to do with our 72 scrap now? We could go for level 5 engines, which is definitely my favorite engine upgrade. But, hmm, I'll go for that. Definitely worthwhile. After this, we will have to put more power into keeping ourselves at our maximum vicious battle potential by powering up our weapons. But for now, we've done a pretty good job here getting ourselves into a nice, powerful death machine. There we go. Alright, where are we going to go now? Let's head over this way. We should be able to loop our way back towards, around towards that exit. What do we find here? We see a small trading post and ask about refueling, but they respond saying, Go away! We don't serve your kind here! That's not very nice of you at all. That's fine, though. We're going to jump over this way and loot and pillage your sector, since you're so rude. Anything of this nice, nice, toxic green planet? We jump into the middle of a rock excavation project on a nearby moon. Unimpressed with our intrusion, they move to defend themselves. Oh, wow. Okay, these guys are going to hurt us a little bit, I think. We're going to railgun them in the weapons, hopefully turn off that bomb before it gets to do too much damage. The Lido missile's in the last slot, so it's going to fire at least once. We could turn on a sentinel drone prevent them from doing any damage to us with it, but I'm not too worried. I think we should be able to dodge it or tank it. We dodged it. Fantastic. It's not too much damage anyway. Smash them again. Another hole in the weapons room, which is always good. And we shoot them one more time. Hopefully this missile dodges... This missile misses us too, but it hits us in the drone bay, which is perfectly fine by me. Next railgun shot's going in the oxygen to make sure they suffocate like normal, which is always fun. Charlie, get in there and fix up our drone bay, please. There we go. Turning off the oxygen system means that they're not going to get anything back going again soon, even though they have fixed most of the breaches, and we'll shoot that guy for fun. There we go, another breach for you there, chum. You like suffocating, don't you? Okay, fix those problems back into the engines. We're going to send Raw and Borman this time, just for fun. Give them both some nice battle experience, and it's probably only going to go to one of them, probably Borman, because he's a mantis and therefore kills people really quickly. Get in there and kill that rock. Excellent, and his friend should come over and die a horrible death very soon as well. There we go, down he goes too. Nice try there, guys. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of useful material, getting a missile, a drone part, and 27 scrap. Nice. Back on board. Problem solved. Get in there, heal yourselves up quickly. Very quickly, indeed, yes. And Ra back to the helm. Charlie back down to engines, and things are looking good for us. 
Uh-huh. We may actually power up our med bay and our teleporter next before we go for the higher level weapons, because we've been using them more than we have been using anything other than the railgun. Especially because we don't really want to kill the enemy ships, because you never get as much money for doing that. Let's come over here, do this jump, and then jump towards the exit. Oh no, it's the sun. That's not good. A rock ship is silhouetted against the sun in the supernova. They hail, saying, Even out here you follow us. We only wish to be left alone. Out of panic or anger, they charge their weapons. Well, that's not going to be happening. Railgun them in the weapons, please. Make sure those systems are as offline as possible. They have level 2 doors, which make boarding a little bit more troublesome, but I doubt that'll be much of a problem, especially because our strategy mostly evolves around making them not be able to breathe anyway. And the missile missed us, which is great. We took no damage there. You leveled up in the engines there, Charlie, which is great. And we've knocked out the majority of their dangerous weapons. One more shot with the railgun. There's two holes in that floor now. It's great. Three holes in that floor now. They're going to suffocate so fast in there. Take out the oxygen system like previously done. It seems to be a good strategy to me. We're going to take a little bit of fire damage here, but hopefully not too much, because we do have those level 2 shields to reduce the fires. There we go. Fire in the helm, which is not great. Fire in the weapons, which is also not great. But it didn't do any damage, so we're pretty well off. Another shot in the oxygen room, please. Make sure that system's broken. These guys are going to be dead soon. Fires have already stopped doing any damage to us, which is great. And... Excellent. We should be able to kill these guys off. Not too difficult. Although it's going to be set on lots of fire soon, which is not ideal. We're going to teleport just Borman over. He should be able to deal with them one-on-one. -on -one, as long as they don't try and gang up on him, which they probably will. No, it looks like they do not care much about Bjorn. He's dead now. And this guy is going to also die pretty quickly there. Brecken. Brecken is not going to have a happy life here. Shoot them once in the helm just for fun. And with the crew dead, we're able to take the fuel out of storage. We have 5 fuel and 29 scrap. Hang on a second. If those fires do damage... <gasps> no, Borman, no! What have we done? We're a fool! No! I just thought about that as I, after I shot the railgun. If the fires did damage, they would destroy the ship, and that's immediately what happened. Well, that was terrible. Okay, let's jump out of here. We've paid the price for our foolishness. We'll jump ahead to the exit. We've lost Borman much too soon. We've arrived at the long-range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. Ugh. We can buy more fuel here if we really feel like it. Not that we really need any, but we'll buy it anyway, because you're going to need it later, I'm sure. A ship refueling station stationed here will let us purchase fuel. So we buy six fuel for 12 scrap. Thank you very much. You will be remembered, Borman. You will be remembered. What a way to go, too. Man, that was stupid. If I hadn't shot the railgun out of the ship, they might have survived the fires long enough for us to teleport him out. Although I wouldn't be... be I'd be kind of surprised if that did happen, because the fire would spread pretty quickly. But still, what a stupid way to go. That was entirely my fault. I'm sorry there, Mantis. You died much too soon. Alright, let's heal up our remaining crew and trek forwards, because we cannot get forwards by looking behind. Is there anything else here we should be spending our upgrades on? Nope, we got a whole pile of, our, whole pile of weaponry in our arsenal. But nothing else we can upgrade at the moment. So we're going to hold on to our money, and we're going to work our way forwards once he eventually figures out how to get through those doors. And uh, here we go, jumping to the next sector. We have the option of rock-controlled sector yet again with the Zoltan Homeworlds. Zoltan Homeworlds are not very good for us, although we could make them better if we equipped the Ion Blast Mark II in our weaponry. So let's do that right now before I forget. Go back to our arsenal, make sure that the Ion Blast Mark II is in our gear. We'll take it out for the Pike Beam, or the Heavy Laser. We should put all these things in here, all the powerful weapons. <laughs> good stuff. Heavy Lasers aren't amazing, but they do do 4 damage per shot in any room you choose, which is pretty darn powerful. I think... I think that's pretty good there. Yeah, let's jump ahead to the Zoltan Homeworlds and see if we can't find ourselves some free money, because it's always nice. Zoltan Homeworlds it is. And maybe we'll find some way to make up for our lost Mantis. I'm sorry, Borman. He didn't deserve that. We arrive in Zoltan Space, and from what we've heard, they anticipated the coming war and have made preparations to hold their borders. However, we're going to be stopping this episode here for now. This has been Vanguard of Valor playing FTL on board the VSS Scarab, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.